Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today's video is going to be the part two to the Mount Shasta video, which was the last video that I uploaded. But today is gonna to be focusing more on like cryptids and like the paranormal stuff that happens. However, I don't think that's all that I included in this video, but We'll see how as we progress. But anyways, with that all being said, let's get right into the creepy stuff. Something that is a common occurrence amongst hikers who hike up the Mount Shasta mountain as well as in that area is the overwhelming feeling of being watched while hiking. Now, yeah, I guess this could be chalked up to the wildlife in the area, but all of these encounters when people have said that they felt like they were being watched are when there's absolutely no other human being around. Now, obviously that is never a good sign. And to me, that just reminds me a lot of some of the things that take place in the Appalachian Mountains. With Mount Shasta being a hot spot for all things paranormal, it is not surprising at all that this is a hot spot for cryptids. Now, one of the cryptids that I want to talk about is referred to as the Matacogni, which I hope I am pronouncing correctly, but I will put the spelling and everything of that word on the screen. And this creature is said to be native and only known to have ever been seen on the Mount Shasta mountain. However, this cryptid is Bigfoot with a different name. Through and through, every single aspect of this cryptid is Bigfoot. This name was given to these Bigfoot type creatures from the natives in the area. And these creatures are actually known to be like very, very helpful. They are known to go out of their way to help people who are hurt in that area. And they are even said to, on some occasions, come down and trade with the locals, like trade goods. Now, like I said, these creatures are basically Bigfoot and they resemble Bigfoot through and through. They can stand anywhere from eight to 10 feet tall. They are covered in thick, coarse brown hair. They're usually said to have brown eyes and they give off a absolutely foul odor. The first encounter that had ever taken place in the Mount Shasta area with one of these cryptids dates back to the 1900s. So all of the cryptid encounters that I'm going to be sharing in this video are very for like face value, like they're just very simple stories. And the reason that I did that is because I didn't wanna to dive too deeply into absolutely anything. Um, because I thought that I was going to combine this video with the last one and the last one was already so long I don't know why it took me three hours to film But anyways, all of these stories are going to be quite short But they are stories that I got from online and they are not mine One day this man who remains anonymous to this day was hiking Mount Shasta when he unexpectedly got bitten by a rattlesnake it was said that after being bitten by this rattlesnake, all of these Bigfoot-like creatures came to this man's rescue. They nursed him back to health, fixed up his wounds, and then released him. After this occurrence, it is said that this man then left gifts in exchange for the help that these creatures had given him because they did treat his wounds again and removed the venom that the snake had left inside of him. There is a website that you go on where they have like a map of all of the Bigfoot sightings all over North America. And in that website, there are several Bigfoot encounters that are listed as taking place in the Siskiyou County, which is the area around Mount Chast. One of these sightings happened in August of 2021 in the Mount Shasta area. An older couple watches a black figure climbing up the mountain. 400 pounds, flowing brown hair, seven feet tall, estimate only. Watched for five minutes, then disappeared into the forest. A VAP sighting 40 minutes later, near the same area filed as a sighting. No alien spotted. Witness contact NCPBRA. Stood, V shop heard a craft over the area for 45 seconds, then short shot, sorry, straight up at the site. All contacts said their equipment stopped working during the sighting and swore to never return. That one specifically because it was one of the more detailed sightings and I know they can't overly detail every single sighting that happens because if that was the case, there would be like pages and pages and pages and pages. But a lot of them are like that, like they're kind of hard to follow. That one seemed like there was a Bigfoot sighting and then an alien encounter. Um, so maybe they're trying to relate the two. But yeah, a lot of them are like that. In 1976, there was an encounter by a logger that was actually written about in the Mount Shasta Herald. This encounter happened to a man named Virgil Larson who was from Idaho and was working in the area as a logger. About 8.30 in the morning, one day, Virgil Larson and his friend Pat had been hiking down Mount Shasta towards where their logging area was. At some point, they had gotten tired of hiking and decided to take a little bit of a break. Now, while taking this break, for whatever reason, the two ended up separating, but they weren't far enough away from each other that they couldn't hear one another.
one another. They were still having an active conversation. They just were quite a distance away where they couldn't see each other. Now, whether that's from the trees or the distance, I'm not sure, but it is noted that they were close enough to be able to still have a conversation. During this time when the two men became separated from one another, Virgil thought that he had heard a third person coming down the mountain. Now, that obviously wasn't too alarming to him as it could have been another logger or even a serviceman, so he didn't really think about it too much. Once this man came within close enough proximity that Virgil thought that the man could hear him, he started to yell out to this man who just completely ignored Virgil's callings and then kind of went and hid itself behind some trees. But while this was happening, at one point the man had kind of I guess like displayed himself by looking over top of the branches that he was hiding behind. That's when Virgil discovered that whatever he was looking at was something that he described as being beyond human. He said that it had dark hair all over its entire body and the hair on its face was quite thick and he said that whatever this creature was gave off this absolutely foul odor. So bad that he could smell it from 20 feet away like it was just absolutely awful. After seeing this, Virgil was terrified and him and Pat just completely took off from the area and again returned to the logging area that they were headed for before they stopped to take this break. Later on, after talking about what they had seen, they decided to return to the area looking for proof that this creature was there. Now there was absolutely no sign of the creature, no hair left behind and the creature was definitely not there anymore. But the foul smell that this creature gave off was still lingering in the air. Rest of the Bigfoot encounters that I'm going to be sharing with you guys now are from BigfootEncounters.com. 1987 in the Bryan Campground located on Mount Shasta, there was a group of retired firefighters playing volleyball. When all of a sudden to their horror, a Bigfoot or Bigfoot-like creature wandered right into the middle of their game. In 1963, a man was deer hunting in the Mount Shasta area where he fell off of a cliffside becoming very badly injured. He claimed that after falling off of this cliffside, he was then rescued by a nine foot tall Bigfoot like creature who carried him to safety, which was about two to three miles away. Another cryptid that is often said to be spotted in the Mount Shasta area, so I needed to mention in today's video, is a creature called Bat Squatch. Bat Squatch is said to have yellow eyes, a dog-like muzzle, bluish fur, sharp teeth, bird-like feet, and leathery bat-like wings. The creature's wings are said to span up to 50 feet, and the creature itself can span up to 9 feet tall. The Bat Squatch is said to affect car engines. And I do have to say, this creature to me sounds absolutely terrifying. It reminds me that of like a Thunderbird and I expressed how much I disliked Thunderbirds in the Thunderbird video that I did. I just don't know what it is about these like huge, creepy flying creatures that just, I really do not like them. One of the most famous sightings of back squash took place in 2009 when a group of hikers and none of these people were together, which is noted there was like a group of hikers and then some other people who had claimed to see this bat-like creature flying out of a crevice of one of the mountains. And some of the people who had saw this creature flying out of the mountain claim that it even resembled to them that of a pterodactyl. The description of exactly what people saw that day varies from group to group, but one thing was agreed on, that whatever these people had seen was again something that either resembled a pterodactyl, bat squash, or some of them even thought that it could have been a thunderbird. Another common occurrence that happens in the Mount Shasta area are these really crazy weather phenomena that some people have even chalked up to being done by aliens. There are also several UFO sightings that have taken place in this area, and like I said, this is just an all around paranormal hotspot. In fact, the amount of paranormal things that have taken place in this area and the amount of UFOs and things that have been sighted in this general area have led people to compare Mount Shasta to that of Roswell. A specific incident that I want to talk about right now took place in 1931 when a very bad fire broke out in the, in the foresty areas of Mount Shasta. And this fire was said to be out of control and getting worse very quickly. This fire would have done some extreme damage if it had not been for this very strange fog that unexpectedly rolled in out of nowhere and completely put the fire out. Like there was no fire still going, the fog just 
completely put it out. The reason that I wanted to include that encounter or that incident is because that is just so strange. Scientists haven't been able to prove where the fog came from because it wasn't a necessarily foggy day. And this fog just really did roll in out of nowhere and put the fire out. And who knows how bad the fire could have really gotten if it wasn't for that weird mysterious fog rolling in that day. February 12th, 2020, people who were not only hiking Mount Shasta, but also people who were just generally near the mountain, witnessed what appeared to be a UFO-like object floating above the mountain. As it had turned out, this UFO wasn't a UFO at all. It was actually just a very strange cloud formation which is a phenomenon. Now, I will insert a picture of it here, it's absolutely gorgeous, but if I had seen that, I would have thought it was a UFO as well. Sometime in the early 90s, there was also a group of people who claimed they had seen a UFO flying around the Mount Shasta area, and those who had seen this UFO claimed that it was being chased by two army planes. Now, I can't confirm this story, but I did think that it was worth mentioning. Next story that I want to share is about a woman who called herself Mother Mary who ran an inn on Mount Shasta. She had opened up this inn after becoming absolutely obsessed with it after reading the book Dweller of Two Planets, which I had mentioned in my previous video, and this book was written about the Lumerian people. This story started taking place in 1951. Mother Mary's specific point with opening up this inn was that she really thought that she could help lost souls find their path through having them come and visit her at this inn. And during the time that her inn was in business, she had over 10,000 visitors. People who had visited Mother Mary's Inn had very similar experiences. They would be driving up Interstate 5 when all of a sudden they would have this overwhelming feeling that they needed to pull into town. They would do so and they would often find themselves at Mother Mary's Inn as it was on several occasions the only place open due to the fact that this would usually happen to these people in the very late hours of the evening. On most nights during these late hours, you could find Mother Mary in her room alone, usually reading or doing something like that. But when she was going to get a guest, it is said that she had this overwhelming feeling too, like she knew they were coming. And so she would walk downstairs and place herself at the table, waiting to dive into conversation with whoever the next guest to visit her in was going to be. Mother Mary was said by all who knew her to be an absolute blessing. She was said to have this very nice, soft-spoken manner about her and always was able to tell people exactly what they needed to hear, almost like a special ability or superpower. Now, Mother Mary herself definitely has like a spiritual feel to her and nothing about this story that I'm going to share will be paranormal, but what I'm going to say next is a little bit on the creepier side. Mary had passed away at the age of 75 years old and because of all of the good that she had done for her community and all of the ways that she had helped all of these people who came to visit her in, by the time that she had passed, she had developed quite the following and she had very specific instructions on what her followers were to do after she had passed passed away. Mother Mary instructed these followers to hold a vigil over her body, saying that she would return shortly after her death. Then she instructed three of her followers, which consisted of a 16 year old boy and two older men to stand guard over her body until the day that she returned came. These three men stood watch over Mary's decaying body for a month. Keep in mind while we talk about this, there was nothing preserving this woman's body. She had passed and so her body was going through the normal process of decay and I can only imagine the smell and the horrific look of her body at this point. After a month, the smell and the appearance of the body just got too much and they finally came to the realization that they didn't believe that Mary was going to return to her body and they finally were not able to keep her death a secret anymore and they had to report it to authorities. After this, Mary's inn was closed and had never been open again and although there wasn't any really like dark, twisted parts of this story, I do think that the fact that Mary herself was a very powerful woman 
was interesting and what happened after with her body is just another little creepy thing to tag on to the Mount Shasta's history. Now I just want to share with you guys two creepy stories that I found from Reddit and then I'm going to wrap this video up but I definitely think that Mount Shasta is a topic that I can visit again and again and again in the future so this isn't the last that you will hear of this mountain from me. This first story the person who shared the story has deleted their account but the story is titled met three ghosts, alien, demon things while hiking up Mount Shasta in Shasta, California. I went on a little hiking trip with my dad to Shasta, California, a small town in Northern California near the Oregon border. Shasta is home to a potential active volcano named, of course, Mount Shasta. There are many trails on Mount Shasta, so my father and I were excited to do some hiking. We drove up the side of the mountain to a parking lot in which one of the trails began. I believed it was called the Old Ski Bowl Trail. The landscape was very barren incline, filled with rocks, boulders, dirts, and very few trees. About an hour into the trail, we came across a very odd assembly of three large boulders. They were arranged in a circle, and we thought it was strange, but we continued on. If you look up pictures of the trail, you'll see much smaller rock arrangements in patterns and circles. My father and I only encountered three people. At least, that's what they appeared to be at first. The first two were a father and son. We met them on a steep incline that went along the wall of a cliff that would then switch back as it reached the top of the cliff. We stopped and said hello and talked about the trail and then went our separate ways. Here's where it gets weird. I kept walking up the incline for just about two minutes. I turned around and I saw the father and son so far down the trail. It should have taken them at least 20 minutes to get down to where they were, but somehow they were there in only about two minutes. To this day, I have absolutely no idea how that could have happened. There was no one else on the trail at this point and I could see the color of their clothes from the distance, so I knew it was them. I pointed it out to my dad and we both thought it was weird but didn't dwell on it so we just kept going. And this is where it gets so much weirder. As we reached the top of the cliff, there was another strange rock arrangement that was off to the side of the trail. This time, there were far more rocks than before and they were now arranged in a row, almost like gravestones. We continued on the trail and reached another sort of incline with a switchback to reach the top of the nether cliff. We reached a point where we would need climbing gear to continue, so we decided to head back. When we turned around, I saw a man standing amongst the rocks staring at us. He was wearing a button-up shirt, cargo shorts, and a wide-brimmed straw hat. He was a distance where I should have been able to make out his facial features, but it was almost as if he had none, like his face was just flesh and skin. I pointed him out to my dad, and then the man quickly ducked down behind a boulder and was peering out at us over the top of the boulder. It seemed almost playful, like a child trying to hide. A few moments I was out of it and I have no recollection of what was going on. According to my dad, I just started walking towards the man in the hat. My dad was calling out to me, Joshua, Josh, what are you doing? Where are you going? And then I came to. I was standing right at the edge of the cliff. It was a huge drop, enough to kill me or seriously injure me. My dad grabbed me and pulled me back to the trail. He told me to stay put and my dad went down to the boulders to search for the man, but he wasn't there. There was nowhere for him to go except up or down the trail and it didn't make any sense. It was like he just disappeared. I have no idea what was going on on that trail and I have no explanation for it. I've told this many times to family and friends and no one has an explanation. I've done research and found similar stories about encounters with a man who has no facial features wearing a hat. I've also read that the Native American tribes from that area believe Mount Shasta as a holy site. They believe it could act as a portal to other dimensions and that is guarded by spirits who would potentially harm anyone who tried to go up the volcano. If anybody has any similar experiences or any insight at all, I would love to hear. So please share anything you have to offer. Thanks for reading. I have that story linked down below for you, but I just have to say that is an absolutely terrifying encounter. And it isn't one that I haven't heard similar stories to before, not only from the Mount Shasta area, but I distinctively remember while listening to uh, some park ranger stories from back in the day, there was somebody who was hiking a mountain and when they got up to the top of the mountain, they saw this man and they were calling out to him. When he turned around, he had no face and it was very, very similar to this story. And I do just find these stories to be absolutely terrifying. I'm going to share one last story from Reddit and then I'm going to wrap this video up. This story is titled Very Strange Encounter on Mount Shasta and was shared by a user with the name White Glinko on the paranormal subreddit. I recently moved to Weed, California, small town next to Mount Shasta for work. 
I'm an avid hiker and love exploring. So naturally, two days ago, I decided to hike the mountain on one of my days off. Not entirely sure why, but I decided to drive my car very deep into the forest surrounding the base of the mountain, as far as the dirt road would allow me. It was around 3 p.m. with a clear sky, so I was very confident and enjoying the scenery as I got out of my car and started my hike, heading closer to the mountain. At first it was your regular everyday hike, lots of birds and squirrels around, the smell of nature that fills your lungs as you walk across the terrain. It wasn't until I reached a small dried up river that I noticed something was dot 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 off. As I stopped to look at the dried up river and take pictures, I noticed that it was strangely very, very quiet. No birds chirping, no signs of squirrels or other animals, and even the sound of the wind you hear when you're on a mountain seemed to be completely gone. At the time, I thought it was just an odd coincidence and started walking up alongside the river. But as I kept walking and being able to only hear my own footsteps, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Not the kind of feeling that makes you think someone is outside your window watching you. The kind of feeling that makes you feel multiple people or things are observing your every moment, studying you. Never had that kind of feeling in my life, but what happened after made me completely forget about that feeling. I suddenly started to hear something out of nowhere that sounded like angelic humming or maybe songs with no lyrics, but it also sounded strangely electric, like the sound telephone line makes. It wasn't very loud, but enough to make me look in the direction it was coming from. I looked to the other side of the dried up river that had multiple trees and other foliage to see someone or something looking straight at me. It almost looked like a ghost with it looking completely white, but this thing was very clearly there. It almost looked like it was wearing a robe, but I couldn't see any feet, hands, or even a face, although it had an oval shaped head. However, I could feel it looking straight at me, almost as if it was trying to remember my every detail. Even from far away, I could tell that its entire body had a very weird texture, almost like porcelain, but if porcelain was a silky fabric. It was very obviously not human. I was very understandably in complete shock and terror, frozen in place, kind of scared. We both looked at each other for what felt like forever, but it was most likely around 20 to 30 seconds. I very, very slowly started walking backwards. I don't think it took more than two steps when it tilted its head as if it was curious or even surprised at what I was doing. All the while, I could still hear that electric angelic humming, and I swear it got louder when I took these steps back. When I turned my head to look behind me to make sure the way was clear so I could run, the song suddenly stopped abruptly without any warning. This shocked me and when I turned back to look at the thing, it was gone. No sign of it anywhere. As soon as I saw that it disappeared, I ran as fast as I could following the path that I took back. Even after it had disappeared and while I was running, I could still feel like I was being watched from all sides. I almost tripped a few times in how fast I was running. In my car, sounds of animals and the mountain wind suddenly came back, but I was still scared out of my mind and drove as fast as I could away from the mountains. I never had anything paranormal happen to me in the past and I've honestly always been very skeptical of stuff like that. But this experience has left me questioning a lot of things. I don't think I want to go back to the mountains. I've even had a nightmare about the experience, but I'm not sure what I saw or what to even call it. That story is also so, so, so creepy, but I also think that could what they had witnessed be one of the Lumerian people as they described it wearing like a robe and being very pale, which is how people describe the sightings of Lumerian people. Now, it could have been something completely different as Mount Shasta is known for paranormal experiences and all of this strange stuff to happen. But I just thought that those two story, or that story and the Lumerian people story seemed like they could be linked together. They're so beyond creepy either way. But guys, that is going to bring us to the end of today's video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below what you'd like to see in my future videos. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.